Everybody want to know what it would be like if a redneck went to the hood. Luckily, I know some rednecks and got to take them to the hood with me. Five things I've learned from taking a redneck to the hood. Five. Number one, I had no clue. Hood chicks love rednecks. So we pulled up to the hood, Mockley, Florida, some chicks hanging out. I had no clue what to expect. I had my homeboy with me. He got out of this truck. We was in this truck. I wanted him to be comfortable. When he got out of the truck, I know hood chicks like big rims. I know they like big wheels. If you find you a rag that jacked up on some 40,000 feet tires and he get out wearing tight jeans and a white beater and they already strong because they do push-ups everywhere they go, women will flock to him like I'm just gonna go on record saying this. A redneck man is a natural aphrodisiac to women in urban areas. They like the swagger, they like the style. I guess they like the manly presence of him because they know he good with his hands. They know he'll fight. They know he can survive in an apocalypse. Rednecks get so much lust and respect from hood women. That's number one. Number two, they translate perfectly. So the one thing on my mind, how am I going to make Gambit feel comfortable? His name was Gambit. How am I going to make Gambit feel comfortable coming to the hood? We pull up. We jack high. We go to a handy gas station called Handy Gas Station in the Markley. One of my guys there from the Markley, he was sitting on some things. He got out the car. They start conversating about cars and trucks. They start conversating about where you get your tires from, where you get your reels from. My homeboy was blowing. On the dro, but he ain't have dro higher than what my homeboy Gambit brought in his truck. I didn't even know who was riding with that. If you knew, if I knew you was riding with that, I wouldn't have rolled with him. Gambit, you was riding dirty and you ain't tell me. There was a lot of... <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go on record saying weed might be the thing that bridges the divide in culture. I, I, I don't smoke or nothing, but they definitely kumbaya over a joint or two. A three or four or five or six. Number three, they understand hood cuisine. Never in my mind did I think, you redneck, y'all hunt. Y'all be in the woods. Y'all like certain type of food. I'm gonna bring you to the hood. I'm gonna give you a pig foot and watch you eat it. You're gonna be so excited. When I when we went into that gas station, that man went in that pickle jar, pulled out that pig foot and just boy, bit right into it and his jaws ain't locked. Cause you know when you, you, you eat a pig foot, your jaws locked. You eat a pickle egg, your jaws locked. His jaws ain't locked. You been here before. You, you been here before. And I should have known it. And if I find out that you can't hit hitting any of my cousins, our friendship is over, Gambit. Our friendship is over, Gambit. Our friendship is going to be in jeopardy. Number four, redneck men love big booties. My name is Josh Bray, and I am here to end the debate of white men like women with big breasts. No, 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 no. no. White dudes like big booty because we was in the projects. And we was in the projects. I ain't going to say her name because I don't want her to do to come shoot me in my neck. We was in the projects. And a certain Isha walked past us. And Isha known for having that wagon, that donkey, that bum, 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 bum. And his eyes was fixated. And I was like, Gammy, you don't get a shot. And he had some on. He was like, listen, I'll shoot everything up here, even the clouds in the sky. Even the clouds in the sky, even the clouds in the sky. Because, you know, he taller than me. Get out of my business. I'm kind of short in real life. Anyways, he was fixated on the booty, which made me think about it. Redneck chicks be thick. Raise hell and eat cornbread type thick. Rednecks like big butts. And I cannot lie. And number five. Rednecks are rolling stones. Wherever they lay their camo hat is their home. You want to talk about a fish out of water? You want to talk about being in an awkward place? You take a dude from the country, the mountain, the woods, that's not used to none of this stuff. They hunt. They ride four-wheelers. They go mud. They raise hell. They eat cornbread. They stay away from people. They only go click. Then you put them in an urban area of the hood where nobody around them looks like them, and they fit in on every corner, on every aspect. They can run. They can muscle. They can fight. They can shoot. They smoke weed. They might sell a little weed. They like big booties, so they got they, them a little hood chick over here. They can talk cars because they got big wheels. They know connect. They can get you discounts. You put a redneck in any situation and he is going to flourish. You take your most dangerous pups, put them in the hood with us, and they'll come back chained up as dangerous as a mutt. No lie. Seriously though, Gambit, stop texting the man chick because now he thinking it's me and I can't fight. I gotta stay here. You don't. You get to go home. I gotta live here.